You might be familiar with the covered call option strategy, which can potentially generate income by selling calls against a stock or ETF an investor already owns. The calendar spread allows you to accomplish a similar goal without owning the underlying, so there is less cash at risk in hopes of generating income. The calendar spread, designed to profit from the time erosion of a near-term option relative to its longer-term counterparts, achieves maximum profit when the underlying closes at the strike price of both options, typically traded at the underlying's current price. If the underlying moves away from the current price in either direction, then the calendar spread starts to decline in value. An at-the-money calendar consists of selling a call at or near the current stock price with a near-term expiration and buying another call with the same strike price but further out in time. While the short call may obligate you to sell the stock, the long call gives you the right to buy back those shares at the same strike price if you need to do so. Since the two cancel each other out, the total risk in the trade is simply what is paid for the spread. Here's an example with XYZ stock trading at $65. An investor sells a 65 strike call with 30 days until expiration for $2 or $200 of premium and simultaneously buys a 65 strike call with 60 days to expiration for $3 or $300 of premium. The investor has now paid $1 for the calendar spread, so the maximum risk is $100 per spread. This example sells a 30-day option, but the investor may choose to sell weekly's options to take advantage of accelerated time decay. As long as the stock trades near $65, the calendar spread will profit from the time decay of the short option premium relative to the longer term option, but the investor may choose to sell shorter term options, like weeklies, to take advantage of decay at an accelerated pace. Longer term options decay at a slower rate than shorter term options. Even though the long option part of the spread is losing money from time decay, the short option is decaying at a faster rate. This difference generates a profit. While the investor is waiting for the near-term option premium to shrink over time after initiating the calendar spread, the stock could easily move away from the strike price in either direction. Though the underlying can certainly move enough to create a loss in the trade, it would take a substantial move to create a complete loss. However, Investors must always decide on how much they are willing to lose before placing any trade with XYZ at exactly $65 at expiration. The short call with the near-term expiration would likely expire without value, but the long call still has value and is worth $2. So the value of the calendar spread has widened to $2. Keep in mind that this is the best case scenario and it is unlikely that the stock will settle exactly at the strike price of the options at expiration. If XYZ settles slightly higher or lower than $65 at expiration, the net profit is going to shrink. Profits will continue to shrink and eventually turn into a loss the further the underlying moves away from the $65 strike. With XYZ at $64, the short call option is out of the money and expires worthless. Since the investor still has the long option, that option can later be sold to lock in a gain. Or if one's forecast is now bullish, the investor may keep the long call with theoretically unlimited upside profit potential. Assume now that XYZ closes at $72 at expiration with the stock above the strike. The short call expires in the money and the investor has the obligation to sell shares. To avoid assignment, the trade can be closed at any time prior to expiration. The calendar spread may produce a good rate of return when an investor's neutral forecast is correct with the underlying closing at or near the strike price of the call options. To learn more about the calendar spread and other strategies, visit the OIC website at optionseducation.org.